Hello guys, thanks for joining me again. In the previous video, I have introduced you to the terminal. And this is a very important command in Ubuntu and actually in any Linux distribution. Because you will have, as I said before, a direct contact with the kernel of the system. Okay, so for this video, I will go over some terminal commands so that you can navigate your uh, GNOME desktop environment and you can gain control over the Ubuntu system but uh, this time uh, from the terminal and not the GUI way, okay? So let's start. First, open your terminal using Ctrl Alt and as usual, I have prepared a file here so I don't miss anything throughout this session so we are all set let's start first let me show you how to handle directories and of course I assume you already know that directories are just like containers of files okay so first you can use the command pwd which stands for print working directory uh, to get your current directory the directory that you are in side right now okay so in this case i'm uh, in home habit and this is the uh, account uh, this is my own account inside home and uh, if you noticed this uh, symbol here, the tilde, is uh, a representation for the home directory, okay? Now, but if you want to change the directory, use the cd command, which stands for change directory. Now, here the, there is uh, more than one way to change the directory. First, you can enter the full or absolute path uh, of the directory that you want to go to. Let's say I want to go to desktop and desktop is located in my home directory. So I can enter this symbol, which represents the home directory and then followed by desktop. Of course, since I am in the current path, uh, since I am in the home directory, I can just enter desktop, okay? And this is the relative path for desktop because desktop is inside uh, my current directory, which is home, okay? So here I am inside desktop, okay? Now, uh, in the later commands, sometimes you need to specify the current directory as your target directory for example okay and we will use that we will use that later on so this is represented actually by the dot followed by forward slash okay now let me go to i don't know directory one which is already right here on my desktop so this is directory one and I just specified the relative path as you have noticed now what if I want to go up in my directories so let's say in this case uh, the directory one okay has the desktop as its direct parent directory and desktop has the home as its parent directory so if I want to go up in this hierarchy of directories, I can use the following uh, symbol, which is two dots followed by forward slash. And I can use it as much as I want, okay? And each symbol will take me up by one step, okay? Uh, make sure to uh, leave no space between these two symbols, okay? Because this is just one argument. I want you to keep in mind that in Ubuntu uh, or any other terminal, you need to leave a space between the command and the argument 
and also a space among the different arguments okay so this will take me two steps higher in the uh, hierarchy of directories so as expected I just went two steps from directory one to desktop and then from desktop to home and I'm currently in home now why do I want to jump to jump among directories of course I want to get into a certain directory to do something some stuff inside it right so there are many commands that can be done where whenever you are in a certain directory so let me go to I don't know desktop which is inside home so this is relative the relative path directory one okay great now I can use the ls command which will list all the content of my current directory of course this command will take by default your current directory as the target directory uh, in which you want to list all the content right but of course you can specify the directory uh, a directory other than your current one to list the content inside of it okay so let's say I didn't specify anything so this will list me all the content inside the directory one which is right here on my desktop but what if I want to list the content of another directory let's say home uh, I don't know desktop let's say and I'm expecting to see all of this content okay that is right here so as you can see I have directory one I have unit box I have velodyne sensor right here okay now just like any other command as you will see later on many arguments can be used with it okay so for list we can use for example the L argument and this will stand for long format okay so this will not just list the, the content inside a certain directory but it will give you some extensive information some additional information about the files inside it or the directories or whatever okay so this is a long format so as you can see we have multiple columns right here you have here the privileges okay or the permissions uh, here you have the ownership information here you will have the uh, size in bytes of each file or directory here you will have the date of the creation or the date of uh, the date uh, du uh, during which the file was last accessed or modified okay and don't worry I will go over each column in the future in few in, in the next videos uh, and I will explain uh, about each one extensively so don't worry about it for now uh, of course there are many other arguments let's say you have the s argument and make sure that the s is uppercase and this will list your files uh, in a decreasing order according to their sizes okay so if you see the sizes right here if you notice this uh, the system had just uh, showed me the files in the order of their sizes uh, column by column okay they are ordered column by column according to their sizes so here you can see the file 4 and the file 4 is just right here with a size of uh, six and a half kilobytes I would say approximately then it is followed by directory 2 directory 1 with four kilobytes of uh, uh, size okay and next you have result txt in the next column with 265 and then the list goes on until you hit the final file which is empty file 9 okay now 
I can use another argument which is R and this will list me all the files in the reverse alphabetical order. So here you will have R, then F, and finally D, okay? And again, it's listed column by column, okay? I can use finally list B, and this will show you the files uh, and according to their types, okay? So here the directory files are followed by forward slash and the regular files are not, right? But of course, you will have also the color code to distinguish among files, among different types of files. For example, the directory will be in blue, the binary or executable file will be in green, and all the other regular files are in white. But in case you, for a certain reason, you forgot about the color code, you can rely on this one to distinguish, let's say, the directories from the regular files, okay? And of course, the list goes on and there are many other, many, like many, many other arguments that can be used with the list command, okay? And I will not go over them all, okay? Uh, and I think that you have noticed that I'm using the clear command to clear the uh, terminal window, okay? Now, this was a very easy command, right? Anyway, let's move on to something very important. Many Linux users, Ubuntu or many other distributions, they sometimes they struggle uh, in some commands. So they forget about, uh, let's say, how to spell a certain command or how, what are the arguments that can be used with such command. So please don't go and surf multiple pages on the web searching for this command and how to use it and what is the issue because on Ubuntu, the help is provided from within the system. So all the help that you need, that you will need in the future is available here in the system itself. So, and this, and this help uh, can be accessed using you either using the help or the man commands. So let's say I want to know more about the list command. So I either enter the name of the command, which is ls followed by help. And this will give me some information uh, on the go about the uh, ls. For example, uh, this is a description, a brief description, list information about files. Here you will have the different arguments. Let's say the uppercase S that we used before, sort by file size, largest file first. And as you can see, you will have many arguments that can be used with LS along with their, with their description, okay? So, the other way to know more about know more about a certain uh, command is to use the man, okay? So followed by the name of the command that you want to know about. And the difference between man and help is that man is uh, provide more uh, extensive information about the command, and it provides it, it offers it in a formal way. So as you can see here, you will have the name with this title, this fancy title, the synopsis, the description, okay? And an extensive list of information about the things that can be used along with this uh, command. You have the author name. So we'll have a, a complete list of the information concerning the command, okay? But I think in most of the cases, help will just do its, the job, okay? It will be just enough, I think. Now, let's move on to text editors. Of course, on Ubuntu, there are some built-in uh, text editors that you can use. Uh, and of course, you can uh, download your own text editors if you like. 
uh, but for me, uh, I find that the built-in text editors are more than enough. So you have the nano text editor and the gedit text editor, okay? So how to use those? Let's say you want to open a file using the nano text editor. You just type in the name of the text editor followed by the file that you want to open. Let's say, let's just call it for now file.txt. You can enter any extension you want, okay? Now, if you hit enter, this will open a the text editor. Actually, this will open the file using this text editor, which is nano. And the nice thing about nano is that it opens uh, a uh, text editor uh, session from, with the, from within the terminal window so you don't have to go any, uh, anywhere else okay you just remain in your terminal and you work and this is very efficient for uh, a for working in a text editor on the go okay so you can enter I don't know I just entered uh, something in gibberish and as you can see here, you have multiple options. You have the write out, which is saving. Uh, you will have the exit using Control X and many other options that you can use uh, using uh, the hotkeys, okay? So let's say I want to write out. Here I will be directed to, uh, I will have the option to change the name of the file if I want. Uh, let's say I want to call it file and then followed by my name okay and then I will hit enter okay and then enter n and then uh, sorry I hit yes okay and then I can exit using Control X of course, you can just enter Control S if you don't want to change the name of the file uh, in order to save the, its content, and then Control X to exit. Uh, now, if you want to use the gedit, uh, it will be basically the same thing. Only now, let's call it just file. Yeah. Only now. A new window will open from outside the terminal okay here you can let's say press on this button to create a new document or a new page from within the same window of a gedit let's say like this and I want you to notice one thing that here on the top of the screen you will find the name text editor and here you can enter the preferences to change the color, to change the font, to change the view, etc. You can open a new window and you can read more about the keyboard shortcuts, okay, that you can use inside this text editor. It's very cool. Okay. Here you will have a list about the files that were opened using a gedit and you can browse to open any other file you want, okay, using a gedit. And here you can save, here you'll have many other options and basically this is it. So you can enter any content you want and make sure to save, okay. Many people forget about saving, please save, okay. Now, you have, I don't know, some other text editors that you can download, for example, VIM. In this case, I didn't download any text editor. So as you can see, it will the system will tell me that command VIM not found, but can be installed with this, okay? Of course, later on, actually in this video, I will show you how to download a piece of software on your Ubuntu system. So don't worry about it. Let me jump into another idea, which is the user, the user and the user privileges. So in Ubuntu or actually in any Linux distribution, there are mainly two types of users, okay? 
you will have the regular user uh, associated with your account with which you signed in into Ubuntu system. In this case, it's called Abit. It's my name related to my account and it's just right here. This will specify the user, okay? Uh, and this will specify the name of my local machine. And let's say now I'm the Abit user, okay? I can create files using nano file txt okay and automatically this will be created in the current directory right unless i provided the full path the absolute path of the file if i want to put it let's say in another directory anyway this will create a simple file as i showed you before but let's say you have some sensitive information that you want to protect okay you don't want someone to access this information. So you can, and on Ubuntu, you have the ability to create a uh, protected file, okay? And this is done using the sudo command. Sudo stands for superdo, okay? And this will give you the user privileges of a root user. And this is the second type of users available on any Linux system. So mainly there are two, type, two types of users, the regular user and you will have the root user. You can think about the root user as the absolute user that, that can do anything, who can do anything, okay? So with sudo, you can gain those privileges of a root user as if you are the root user yourself. And let's say I had enter. As you can see, the, uh, the system will require that I enter my password. And this is this will be the same password that I used to log in into the system. Uh, I just type in I just typed in my password, but it didn't appear. But trust me, the system uh, understood it. Now I can open this file, okay? So this file, I enter anything inside it and let me save using Ctrl S and Ctrl X. And as you can see, this file was created in directory one, right? So if I go to directory one, this file right here okay okay I created this file earlier I need to create a new file sorry for that let me repeat okay so enter anything Control S and then Control X and right now if you check the file will appear with a lock on it, okay? So if you attempt to enter it, you can read inside it anything, but nothing can be changed about it, okay? So it's opened as you can see in read only, okay? So now your file cannot be modified. It's a protected, okay? Now, uh, just for you to know, inside any inside a certain terminal session when you use the sudo command you will be prompted into entering your password only once per session okay but if you open another session you will be required to re-enter your password again whenever you use sudo but for the same session you have to do it only once now what if i notice that sometimes let's say i I noticed that I'm using sudo a lot inside a terminal session. So this is very annoying, right? You have to type in sudo each time, okay? Uh, and actually sudo is not just used to create a protected file, let's say. Uh, in the future, in later videos, I will show you, or actually in this video later on, I will show you that sudo can be used for other purposes, okay? Where you want to have the uh, super user uh, privileges okay 
So in this case, there's a work around this. Uh, and this is done using sudo su. Earlier, you used sudo to gain the uh, privileges of the super user, which is the root user, right? But for now, here, this command will change the user, which is shown here as abid, into the root user that I talked about earlier, okay? And as you can see, root appeared here instead of abid, and the dollar sign was replaced by the hash sign. Now I am the, the root user or the super user, so I don't have to use sudo, okay? So for example, let's say uh, I want to access the file txt that I just created, but right now I'm the super user, okay? So as you can see, I can enter here and I can write whatever I want and save using control S and control X, okay? Now, what if I want to change the user back to Abid? You can use su followed by the name of the user. Okay, so here it is. I'm back to Abid. Now, if I attempt, let's say, to open this file that I have created using sudo, which is a protected file, without neither using sudo and neither being the root user, I'm the regular Abid user and I'm not using sudo, and I want to access this protected file. As you can see, uh, this note here specifies that the file is unwritable. So if I attempt to write inside it, to modify it, and hit Control S, it will give me an error, okay? Permission denied, okay? So I cannot save my work. I cannot write inside this file because it's read only, okay? So I hit no, I don't want to save my changes because it will give me obviously an error. So this is how you use the sudo. And you can see that the sudo will turn you into certain, I don't know, some powerful user, which is the root user, okay? And will give you access to anything that needs the root privileges. Now, let me tell you how to download a certain piece of software or application. Of course, I mentioned this in, earlier, in the earlier video, that you can go to Ubuntu software and you can pick the application that you want in order to install it. But how to do it the terminal way, okay? Uh, the Ubuntu system has a certain repository, okay, in which all the softwares and the applications available for Ubuntu are there. So you can think as a repository as uh, a magical computer where all the softwares and the applications are there. And you need to communicate with this computer, with this magical computer from your local machine in order to install the application or the software that you want. Now this is done using a package manager called apt-get. apt-get is your messenger, okay? So you can do whatever you want with these softwares and with these applications available on Ubuntu repositories. So let's say I want to install. I can type install and then I specify the name of the application that I want to install. In this case, I want to install Kazam, which is a, a screen recording application. Okay. And if I hit enter, this will give me permission denied, front end lock. Whenever you see this permission denied or a certain lock that cannot be accessed, of course, this can be solved using, using the sudo command, or you can switch the user to the root user, okay? Either way will work just fine. Now, this is another way, as I told you, to use the sudo command, other than creating private files, right? If I hit enter right now, 
the application Kazam will be installed and it will notify me that the after this operation uh, approximately one and a half megabyte of additional disk space will be used so no surprise this is took this took no time okay because it's small now if you go to this button on your dock where you can see all your applications you can see that this application Kazam was installed okay another way to make sure that your application is installed is using apt cache apt cache will provide you with the information that you need about your applications okay whether installed or not for example let's say I want to know about Kazam application if it's if it's installed or not so I can use the argument policy apt cache policy and then I specify the name of the software that I want to know about so in this case you will see that uh, next to installed you have the version of the uh, application or the software here you have the candidate version with which is the version available on the Ubuntu repositories and which is up to date so as you can see my application is up to date I downloaded the latest version and you will have other information now how to remove chasm okay back to apt get you need to write remove and followed by the name of the application that you want to remove and you can also use the purge command so there are two ways of removing an application either remove or you can use the purge command and the only difference is that purge will not just remove the application but also it will remove the configurations the configuration files associated with this application and the configuration files are files that uh, set the parameters and the system settings for the proper functioning of your application so let me use purge in this case and of course whenever you use apt-get you have to use the sudo command okay because you are doing some change inside your system you are installing removing application etc you need the super user uh, privileges okay so let me remove it for now and as you can see this disk space will be freed so yes I want to remove it And it will take some time okay now it's done if you go again into this button right here you can see now that Kazam disappeared right and you can make sure also using apt cache policy Kazam and as you can see next to installed right now you have the word none which means that Kazam is not installed on your system it's only available on the Ubuntu repositories under this version as specified next to candidate okay now sometimes you know about a certain application let's say you know the first letters inside its name or and you know what does it do okay but you don't know exactly its name so you cannot install it directly okay so here app get offers you a uh, the option to search for a certain application so you use app get followed by search okay here of course you are not modifying your system so no need to use the sudo apt get search 
and you can specify let's say for demonstration purposes let's say I uh, forgot about the last letter inside Kazam application so I know that the first letters are Kaza okay so if I hit enter okay Uh, sorry, this will be done using the cache, not the app get. Sorry about that. And if I hit enter, this will give me all the available applications on the Ubuntu repositories uh, whose names contain Kaza. Okay, let's say Kazakh. I don't know what how how to spell it uh, you'll have here you'll have here let's say this one okay you will have also next to each application name you will have its description so here it's a screencast and screenshot application created with design in mind okay so this meets the criteria that I have specified this is a screen recorder so this is definitely it so now i can install it using sudo app get install okay now that i know its specific name and one final thing concerning app get is the update and the upgrade commands so what is the difference app get update let's say that a certain application uh, is available in uh, the Ubuntu repositories in version 1 and after a while a version 2 became available but the uh, system your local machine does not know that a new version is available on the Ubuntu repositories of this specific application so the way to change the mindset of your local machine let's say or to inform it that a new version is available on the Ubuntu repositories so the next time you install this application it will be installed up to date you will install directly the latest version the way to do it the way to say this to the computer to your local machine is using apt-get update okay and of course you have to use the sudo in front of it let's say we hit enter here to update this may take a bit of time and usually we you we do this as I said before installing a certain application or before even upgrading the existent applications the applications that are inside your system in the first place almost there and it's done yeah now upgrade the upgrade command will update the applications that are currently installed inside your local machine to the latest versions that are available on the Ubuntu repositories without having to reinstall them okay so let's say uh, I want to install I want to upgrade my applications you will use apt get of course you have to use sudo again don't forget about it sudo apt get and then followed by upgrade this will actually upgrade all the applications on your system that need to be upgraded okay sometimes you don't want that sometimes you don't want to waste your time upgrading everything on your computer you just want to upgrade only one application that you care about that you want uh, to uh, update it to the latest version luckily this can be specified using install followed by not 
uh, no uh, upgrade no, not like that only upgrade yeah this is it only upgrade and then followed by the name of the application that you want to upgrade and this will uh, will not install the application it will just install and upgrade for it so let's say chasm i just removed chasm so as you can see it just kept chasm it's not installed and only upgrades are requested but let's say i have installed chasm and it's not up to date for a certain reason now you can upgrade it using the following command okay perfect now that we are done with app get and app cache, let's say that sometimes you may want to install a certain application that is not available on the Ubuntu repositories. Not everything that you want will be available there. So what to do in this case? In this case, you will install the Debian file, okay, of the software that you want to use and then you will use another package manager which is called dpkg in order to install the software on your system let me give you an example let me explain this through an example let's say i want to install google chrome now on ubuntu software you you will find the chromium which is the open source version of the google chrome uh, but i want google chrome let's say i don't want chromium so what to do in this case of course i can use my default browser right here which is firefox okay okay i'm already here let's say i go to google chrome browser let me do it again just for the sake of demonstration if i enter here i can download chrome when you download chrome make sure to specify the debian file because Ubuntu is a Linux distribution that is based on Debian. Debian is the parent of Ubuntu. You can see that. Okay, so don't choose RPM, which stands for Fedora or OpenSUSE, which is another kind of operating systems. Okay, accept and install and then wait for it and it will be downloaded in the specified directory or by default in the downloads. In my case, I have already downloaded this file. So let me go to downloads. Of course, I could have done it using the terminal way. Now here is the file, the Debian file. Okay. So let me take the name of this file and close it. Now that I have the Debian file inside my system, I can use sudo, of course, because I'm modifying, I'm uh, installing a new uh, software on my system. I am applying some modifications to my system. So I should use sudo just like I've got dpkg this time. And you use i, which stands for install. And then you need to specify the full path of your uh, Debian file. Of course, I can go to downloads and then I specify just the name of the file, the relative path. Uh, and of course, from directory one, I can specify the full path, which is home downloads and then control shift V to paste the name of the file. Okay. So while installing the the software you need to specify the debian file okay so in this case it will download google chrome and the package name is google chrome stable as you see right here it's being unpacked 
now that it's installed as you can see if I go here I can find Google Chrome and I can add it to my favorites and now it's on my desktop on my dock okay great now what if I want to remove this application in apt-get you used to use remove or purge right but here you will use the pkg package manager that you use to install this application in the first place followed by r and of course you need to use sudo and then you will only specify the package name in this case in order to remove the software not the debian file name okay so if you remember it was google chrome stable the first words of the file name and this appeared during unpacking while i'm while, while i was installing the application so if i hit enter google now google chrome is removed as you can see i cannot see it on my dock anymore and if i if I look for it here I cannot find it right now right okay so it was removed so this is pretty much everything for this video now you can download any software you want you can jump among directories you can use text files you know about uh, the user privileges the sudo and you have you have many other tools that you can use right now so feel free to practice them and in the next video i will go over uh, additional commands so you can gain full control uh, over your ubuntu environment so thanks guys for watching i hope you guys learned a lot from this video and if you liked it please press like and subscribe uh, to support this channel and don't forget to push the notification button and i hope to see you on the next video